I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I think you probably have gotten lots of good toys and things in your stocking from Christmas. Yes. Boy, I know I did. I've got all kinds of cool stuff. Not the least of which is my Kindle Fire, which you'll hear more about shortly. But, dude, I just had a really great Christmas. Hope you did too. And you're looking forward to an excellent new year. As Bill and Ted would say, a most excellent new year. <laughs> Coming up with 2012. 2012, this happens to me every year. But every year I go, what? How can we be in 2012? When I was a kid, I looked at the 20s, like the year 2000, and thought, dude, wow, that'll be in the future. We'll be living in the future. We'll have air cars, and we'll have hoverboards, and we'll have jetpacks, and no, we don't. But I'm still waiting. So those of you out there that are inventors, get on the stick. Get me an air car like the Jetsons. If it falls into a suitcase, fine. If not, eh, it's okay. But anyway, so go for it. Develop all that stuff that we used to dream about. I do remember, I will say this, this, this is I probably shouldn't say this, but when I was a kid, I literally remember thinking to myself, wow, the year 2000, I'll be an old dude. <laughs> and here it is, the year 2012. Hmm. I'm not old. It's all perspective. I don't really, you know, I'm not an old dude. All right? Don't, don't make any snide comments out there. Okay. <laughs> anyway, see, isn't this a very festive holiday beard? <laughs> I started to use the avatar function on my uh, Logitech webcam software to make myself look like Santa Claus for this program, since it's my Christmas edition and then realized I don't have to use an avatar. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> anyway, so I, I'm in a strange mood as usual. Just kind of <laughs> enjoying the whole holiday thing. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's talk about a few things. First of all, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. By the way, Tech Podcast Network reminds me, we have an awesome sponsor. I know you think it's crazy that I'm excited about sponsors, but I am because this particular sponsor is awesome. Mosey Pro for Business, technically. They call it Mosey Pro for Business, but you know what? I don't care if you're just a guy in a shack with a computer, you need backup. And you particularly need backup. Now, one of the things that happens around this time of year is all the geeks go home for their holidays and they get with family and all the family say, can you fix my computer while you're here? You know, there's some things that we geeks can fix and some things we can't. And if your hard drive gets completely trashed and destroyed, all your data is gone. That's just the way it is. I'm sorry. But, see, here's the thing about proactive things. That's doing something before something else. And that is, if you had proactively signed up with Mosey Pro through this special offer that I have here on the screen right now, if you had signed up with that, then all your data would be backed up to the cloud. And once your hard drive died, then you could get it all back. 
all your data, all your awesome pictures that you don't want to lose, all your videos, all your Dr. Bill episodes that you've recorded and saved forever. Well, I can dream. Anyway, the point is, you would have all your stuff, and that's what you want. You want your stuff safe. So, use the special offer here for Mosey Pro. 15% off if you use the term or word or code word podcast 15. Easy to remember, podcast 15. Use that and you'll get 15% off your Mosey Pro and it's already inexpensive. So go for it. Really, seriously, go for it. All right, let's talk about. Whoa! Geeks Offer of the Week! <laughs> wow, right off the bat, a Geeks Offer of the Week? Well, yes. And it is the Geek Software of the Week, Ramina. Ramina. And I talk about that in my upcoming video, as though I'd already talked about it, but that's because I do things out of order. That's just the way it is. <laughs> anyway, this Geek Software of the Week, Linux Edition, will blow your mind. At least it did mine. It's so simple and yet so incredibly useful. And of course, since it's open source, completely free. This is remote access software that uses RDP. Now, on Linux, okay? So in, within Linux, you can RDP to a Windows box. And I'm, I'm telling you, I've used RDP a lot. This is even easier than Microsoft software. You can set these things up and go to a server just like that. Awesome. I use it at work all the time because Linux is now my official regular client there. And Ramina is awesome. So you need to check this out. In Fedora, all you got to do is go to Add Remove Software, uh, which is their version of their app store, <laughs> if you want to think of it that way. Type in R-E-M-N-I-N-A. It will find Ramina. You install it. Why do they call it Ramina? I don't know. You know, Linux geeks come up with weird names. What can I say? Anyway, so, but it, uh, it really, seriously, I'm telling you, it is awesome. And until you've used it, you will probably say, Dr. Bill, you're out of your mind. Why do you care so much about an RDP client? You know, <laughs> I guess it's because I started using Linux back when it first came out in 92. I've been using Linux a long time. It's never been this easy. <laughs> I am telling you, it's never been this easy. I've got something along those lines later on in the netcast, so hang around. Okay, next item, Google's latest Easter egg is let it snow. All you got to do is go to Google and for a search term, type in let it snow and hit the OK or whatever it is in Google. What is it in Google? It's not OK, is it? You hit the Google search button for let it snow, that phrase, and you will see snow on your screen. It's an Easter egg, what they call Easter eggs. I don't know why they started calling them Easter eggs. I guess because you normally search for them and try to find them, and it's that way on all the DVDs and games and stuff. You have to find these little hidden things, so they started calling them Easter eggs. Yes. I said I didn't know why, and yet I told you why. That's because I get confused. But anyway, the point is that there are Easter eggs. And this, the, this is a list of Easter eggs. If I go to the link here, you will see that there are other Easter eggs out there. There's one called Gravity, where you type in Google Gravity and click I'm feeling lucky, and your Google will collapse right before your eyes. How weird is that? You can type in a skew and it will tilt your search results. You can type in ASCII and uh, ASCII art and Google will change its look to match your search criteria. In other words, ASCII. Uh, alternative languages. Uh, you can do an alternative language such as Klingon and Pirate. R. Anyway, kapla. Uh, anagram. Searching for anagram causes Google to suggest nag a ram. Yes. Recursion. Searching for recursion causes Google to suggest recursion once again for good measure. The loneliest number is one, of course. You search for the loneliest number and it's one. Uh, 
Uh, the answer to the universe, most geeks know the answer, 42. So does Google, because Google is geeky. These are all Easter eggs that Google has out there for your geek pleasure. Okay, so cool stuff. Now, here's the thing. Uh, Google's latest Easter egg, Let It Snow, when you type that in and it starts snowing, fluff, <laughs> don't just arbitrarily stop. Let it finish because it will fog your screen up and then you can take your mouse cursor and clean the screen off. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Very cool stuff. Anyway, next item. CentOS and Oracle released their Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 6.2 clones. Send in the clones. Yes. I mentioned on the last netcast that uh, CentOS didn't have their 6.2 version out. Well, now they do. So, dude, all my servers, personal servers, and netcast server uh, are CentOS Linux which is Red Hat with all the Red Hats removed, the logos removed, okay? Next item, Kindle Fire Software Market removes the block on Android Market. Ta -ta! <laughs> now, for that, let's go to a demo of my Kindle Fire, and I'll talk about this very feature in that demo right now. All right, I want to show you the shiny. <laughs> And basically what that's talking about is the Kindle Fire. Now, the Kindle Fire is a, uh, an e-book reader, officially, but it's really an Android tablet as well. Um, oh, look, I hit the button. The button is right here at the bottom, by the way. And why do I call it the button? <laughs> because there is only one button on the Kindle. And so that's what that's about. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. You'll also notice, as I mentioned, it is a Kindle. It is an e-reader. And it's color. Isn't that awesome? Uh, I have the regular Kindle version 2, that is. And uh, you notice I can hit my Star Trek book and look there is my Star Trek book in all of its glory. Now, this particular Star Trek book is um, Cast No Shadow by James Swallow. That's the one that I'm currently reading. And uh, that's why it's up here on the carousel. This is what they call the carousel. This is all the stuff that I've been doing on my new Kindle Fire. Now, I got it a few days before Christmas. I didn't get it as a Christmas present, but I kind of got it as a sort of a birthday present because I got some money for my birthday, so I ended up, ended up getting a fire. But check this out. There's applications like the um, Wi-Fi Analyzer. These are all the Wi-Fi fangs that are in my area. Um, so I've been playing with that. Also, now this, boy, this is awesome. This is the Blueberry app. Now, you'll notice that all this is, you say, well, you know, this looks like an Android tablet. Well, it is an Android tablet. That's what's so awesome. I can go to video. I can then scroll over to uh, technology. Hello, technology. And here are all the tech things on Blueberry. And of course, there's good old Dr. Bill. And we'll hit the last netcast and it'll start playing this way but check it out there's the dr bill netcast running on the blueberry app on my kindle fire let me can you hear it isn't that awesome now i want to wait for just a second here until my face comes on not because i want to see my face necessarily but look how fluid that is. I'm going to turn it so you can see it a little clear. You have been enjoying yourself this week with your technology. I certainly have been with mine. All right. Now let me go back here. Isn't that awesome? Now, also, Netflix. I can watch all my Netflix stuff. I can play Angry Birds. Ha <laughs> ha. I can check my email. 
I can play music. Now this is awesome. This is all the music. Now this music, I'm, I'm not, you're not seeing it very well because I keep turning it toward me instead of toward the camera. Uh, and there's my smiling face in the background. Anyway, the cool thing about this is that uh, my music is actually stored in the cloud in my Amazon Cloud account. And so all these albums that uh, I'm flipping by here, there's Larry Norman, very old uh, contemporary Christian artist uh, who has now gone to his reward. But at any rate, uh, bless his heart, um, <laughs> I've been listening to all kinds of stuff. I've been, you know, going through my Kindle library. These are all my books. You notice it's all Star Trek. I mean, what can you say? I read Star Trek all the time. You're getting a lot of insight into my habits here as I flip through. But uh, basically, there's a 2X client. There's the Citrix receiver. Now here's something I wanted to show you. Citrix receiver and the VMware View client. Both are now available on the Kindle Fire because this version of the Kindle Fire, this, this version of its software, is 6.2.1. 6.2.1 opened it up to where, uh-oh, I hit a button. Oh, I went to Facebook. <laughs> I hit a button with my little finger and accidentally went to Facebook. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, <laughs> the point is that the 6.2.1 software opened up the Amazon App Store, uh, or actually opened it up so you could do more than just the Amazon App Store. And they added the uh, View software and the Citrix receiver software into the Amazon App Store. Now, those are the primary reasons that I would have hacked the, um, the Fire and put, you know, some other operating system on it. I really like the way this works. The carousel here is very handy. I can go up here to surf the web. I can go to apps. Matter of fact, let me go to apps right quick. I want to show you something about that. Um, on the apps, you've got cloud-based apps. So all these are installed from the cloud. And then device apps, which I could use offline. That's the, this list. So these are all installed locally. So even if I didn't have Wi-Fi connectivity, I could be using these. And that's pretty cool. So apps, docs, video, music. Music, as I said, is all these albums. Look, check these albums out. All these albums are out there on my Amazon Cloud account. Now, I did want to mention something about that. The Amazon Cloud account, you can get free 5 gig, okay? However, MP3s don't count. Uh, well, no, it does count on the 5 gig account. Let me back up. It does count on the 5 gig account, but if I were to get the next level up, which is 20 gig, which is $99 per year. If I were to get that, is that right? No, it's $20 a year. I'm thinking of Dropbox. Dropbox, the next level up for me would be 99. But for the Amazon, it would be $20 per year. And that would give me 20 gig. I believe that's right. Boy, I'm getting confused because I've been looking into these things. Anyway, the point is that all MP3s would not count into that 20 gig. That I'm sure of, okay? Not sure of the price, but I am sure about the uh, way they do the, uh, the uh, cloud, you know, what counts within your cloud account. So the MP3s wouldn't count. So all these albums I've got out there, now in my, my free account, for, uh, five gig one, I'm taking up about three gig in space right now in music. Um, and that's a lot of albums, so you know, don't, don't diminish that, but the point is, if I were to go to that next level, uh, I'd be able to do it and still have a lot of space for files because the MP3s wouldn't count, which is pretty cool. So anyway, I'm kind of rambling around here, but I just wanted to show you the goodness that is the Kindle Fire. And let me uh, hit the button here and shut it down. That's pretty much the only option you have is this button will allow you to uh, come over here where you can kind of see it. It's kind of hard to kind of hard to do. But anyway, that button and then on top of the Kindle Fire are two speakers. 
There we go. You can't really see them because it's black on black. The black button on the black thing lighting up black. That's from Hitchhiker's Guide. Anyway, so you got two speakers on the top here. Nothing else on here. Now, the one thing I did want to mention is this rubberized back. Uh, I don't know how well you can see it. I probably can't see it very well at all, but this, this really feels nice. And the whole thing feels very, very solid. I just really love the Kindle. It is awesome. And, you know, I was a little concerned about the form factor. The fact that this is a, a seven inch, oh, there's my face. Isn't that nice? <laughs> anyway, uh, I was concerned about the form factor. Uh, being a seven inch tablet, but it really works well. I'm, I'm very pleased at, uh, at, at the way this form factor works. My G tablet is a 10 inch, and of course this is a seven inch, but uh, wow, this is really, really nice. So, just wanted to show you that. Hope you've had a wonderful Christmas with everything that you got, and we'll move on Isn't from that awesome? here. I'm telling you the Kindle Fire is awesome. Just saying. So, it is, in fact, one of my favorite new geek toys. And it's shiny. I mean, literally, it's shiny. There's the shiny. <laughs> Glass is typically shiny. Just say it. Anyway, next item. Hasbro is upset over the Asus Transformer name. Transformers, robots in disguise. Yes, well, they are not too thrilled. I was about to have something fall off over here off the table, so I rescued it. Anyway, uh, this is cross-posted from the Handheld Hack. More about that in a second. Uh, robots in Disguise, yes! Now, would there be any confusion over a tablet called Transformer and the little toy robots? No. But Hasbro is still upset and has sued Asus. So, oh well. Anyway, I don't know how that's going to come out. Personally, I don't care so much. However, I thought it was odd. And it gave me a chance to post a picture of uh, Bumblebee the Transformer. Yes. On the blog. Okay. Now, I mentioned the cross-posting. The Kindle Fire article thing there. Uh, about the 6.2.1 software upgrade in the blog is cross-posted -post from the handheld hack, as is the Hasbro being upset over the Asus Transformer name. That is also cross-posted from the handheld hack. And I mentioned in another little blurb here that cross-posting, I know, can be confusing, particularly if you look at both blogs, the handheld hack blog and the Dr. Bill blog. But it's sometimes different audiences. This is audiences and because of that I post them on both places so deal with it <laughs> just saying all right next item do you want your computer to read your mind <laughs> I bet it would be confused <laughs> by reading my mind yes but I think it would be cool too because what I envision is playing a game with a spaceship flying through the air and you're doing it all with your brain. <laughs> that would just be awesome. I like that. Now the way this works is not quite that it reads your mind literally. You have to do something like, it says here at the end of the article, the next step is mapping specific thoughts to specific actions analogous to programming a universal remote control. The key here is that the thought and the action don't necessarily have to be the same. For example, if you want to use the headset to, say, turn on a TV, you might program the headset to perform that action when you think about kittens. What? If I was going to program it to do something, I would think of bunnies. They're cute and fluffy. What would I make a thinking about bunnies do? Oh, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. And if I did, I'd think of bunnies. That and bananas. Just because it's random. And I am quite random. But you knew that. Okay, so whoa! Another Geek Software of the Week. This Geek Software of the Week is a Windows Geek Software. Well, it's 
it's more than just Windows, but it's mostly Windows Geek Software of the Week, and that is this. It is called Plex. Plex is a media server to serve one's media throughout your LAN. LAN being local area network, the local area where you have a network, as opposed to out to the internet. Anyway, the media server idea is, is that you have a machine like I do in my office back behind me here, and it has all of my video and family videos and stuff and pictures and all that. Now, it's all there. It's not over here. I'm pointing over to my giant screen LED type TV. So, how to get it from there to there? Through a media server, of course. So, what do you do? You install Plex Media Server on your computer that has all your stuff. Then you go to your Roku account and you type in the code word Plex. Plex. And once you do that, it will put the Plex client on your Roku and then you can use the Roku to play the media that's on your PC. Yes! So, that is the Geek Software of the Week for Windows this week. You can use it on your desktop, you can use it for your mobile devices, like your iPhone, iPad, iTouch, iPod Touch, and your Android devices, like my Kindle and my phone, which I actually have over here. You notice, uh, I never seem to have my phone. <laughs> which my wife is constantly frustrated about that I don't have my phone or that I have my phone but the battery is dead. Yes, well, it is an Android device as well. So, I could use it. One thing about Christmas is that you get all this stuff all over the place. So I've got stuff everywhere. So I have my Kindle Fire, I have my Droid X phone, both of them Android devices. That's kind of a weird effect there. And <laughs> I can use them to do android -y things, like the Plex Media Server. So I could actually, in my home, connected to Wi-Fi from my Android device, connect to the Plex server on my computer and see video off of my computer. How cool and geeky is that? Just saying, awesomeness. So, this has been a very weird and disjointed Dr. Bill, the Computer Commission Netcast. However, what do you expect? It's a week after Christmas. I'm sitting here on a Thursday after Christmas off work. Ha <laughs> ha! Because I took off from before Christmas to New Year's, so I'd have an extended period of time to do stuff. Like read my Star Trek book on the Kindle. I didn't say it was going to be accomplishing a lot of stuff, but it's good because it relaxes you and makes you a happy person. So, so enjoy your stuff. I'll enjoy my stuff. And you'll join me hopefully next time when the doctor will say, bananas. I don't know why I do these things, but what are you gonna do? New Year's coming, 2012. That means exciting new stuff. That means new um, exit graphics on all of the podcast so that I can put, you know, copyright 2012 instead of 2011. So I make changes. But it also means things are going to be happening at techpodcast.com. Stay tuned for that. Can't tell you all the things that are going to be happening because I don't know them. <laughs> But I do know that Todd says there's cool things coming, and Todd's never wrong. Yes, he's the CEO of Raw Voice. Whatever he says, there goes. So, I know it's coming. Whatever it is, it'll be good. So, join us next time. Remember, until then, the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.